Alright, today on Linux Lounge we will be taking a look at Puppy Linux Slacko. Let's get right to it. Now the uh, first thing to note about this distribution is it's a uh, sort of Puppy Linux, um, well, sort of Puppy Linux derivative I suppose. Um, it's completely Slackware compatible, which is awesome. And this, this, let me try that again. This distribution is aimed to be, well, really lightweight. And well, they've done it. It is in fact extremely lightweight, um, which is amazing considering the amount of stuff they've packed in here. The download size is really small as well, which still amazes me to this day. Um, so the first impression upon booting this up is uh, it's ugly, really ugly, um, even for a lightweight distribution. Um, point being though, can be fixed, very easily in fact. And I don't know why they didn't just do this out of the box, but okay. So you just have to, have to go to desktop, pop the theme manager, original port and apply. Much nicer, don't you agree? Um, so the first thing you'll get upon booting you up is this little welcome page, and very nice it is too. Because this distribution, as well as other things, is actually somewhat designed to be carried around on a USB. The live CD experience is very good. Um, you just enable all these features, you know, you got your keyboard layout, your um, language, your firewall, your date and time, all that lot. Uh, the first thing I would say about this distribution is Although it can be installed to a physical hard drive, I had problems doing so, uh, in a virtual machine, that is. It kind of just installed and then failed. It didn't fail during the installation, rather, but I booted up the system and it wouldn't boot at all. Although I did try it earlier on physical hardware, a netbook, uh, and it seemed to work just fine. Um, and yeah, it was really lightweight on the netbook. So first impressions is, this little distribution has a lot of software. Now let's say without the box theme, it's kind of a uh, Mac Aero ish. Not Aero, uh, something a lot to it, but that's irrelevant sort of software at this point. And a lot of software it does indeed have. You know, you've got your archive manager thing here. On the desktop, you've got your software installer. You know, you install your applications, which is pretty good. And a lot of stuff there is indeed to install. Not the simplest of applications managers but indeed it is lightweight which is what we're going for here you can set up which is basically your settings manager got like a little bit of a text editor here genie which is a quite good choice you've got your LibreOffice writer which is astonishing that they managed to pack this in here but not the most lightweight choice but it seems to work fine on the network that I tried it on you've got a sort of paint program can't really complain, it's you know, it's a paint program, you can paint, I guess. If you want to do that. Just lose the changes. Got your Weaver Office once again. You got your web browser, which if it'll load, is quite interesting. It's a uh, pale moon. Which seems like a bit of a bizarre choice to me. It's uh, similar ish to Firefox, but um Yeah. You get this welcome page, which is quite nice. Yeah, I'm not really sure about the choice of Pale Moon in particular, but as I understand it, it's a lot lighter than, uh, say, Firefox, so I can live with that. You've got your email, which I've never heard of this particular email client, to be quite honest with you, but I would imagine it should work just fine. You don't need anything special for your email client. Um, I can see this actually being good on Netbox on account of all this having all this stuff. You know, you got a chat, which as I understand it, hex chat. Why they didn't just call it hex chat or IRC, I don't know. Um, if you media player, you've got a good old GNOME M player. You've got a calendar, never heard of Osmo myself, but okay. And you have this internet connection utility, very good. And by the way, I must say, the icon theme is actually quite nice. Um, in the menu, you've got all this lot. 
not as organised as some, you know, say the whisker menu or that, but I would assume it would work. Um, yeah, you've got your installer down here, you can remaster it if you want to, and redistribute it, which is pretty cool. If you want to make your own spin on Puppy, that's how you would do that. Um, you've got some web browser manager thing, which is pretty cool. If you want to install your Chrome, Vivaldi, or Opera, well, you can go ahead and do that. So if you're not a fan of the built-in browser, or if your PC is capable of running one of those, you can go ahead and do that. Um, You've interestingly enough got a utility to download Java up here, so if you need that, which is pretty good, you know, because well, getting Linux on Java isn't, no, rather, getting Java on Linux isn't really the easiest thing, especially for new users. Um, you've got Java control panel down here, you got your X skill, which is pretty good. Uh, for your farm manager, you've got rocks, which I've never heard of, but seems to be lightweight, which is what matters for puppy. Um, you know, you got your paint program, your Inkscape, Inkscape Lite more specifically. Uh, you got LibreOffice stuff, your image viewer, which I have no idea what that is. Um, and I'm probably gonna have no way of finding out, but okay, it works fine. I've opened a few images in it. Um, you know, you got uh, the screenshot, that sort of thing, which is pretty good. Once again, you got your documents, you know, you got your Genie, your uh, simple Leafpad text editor, which I'm quite fond of Leafpad, so good one including that. Um, you've got PDF Viewer, which is pretty good. Wait, no, a PDF Converter, rather. But you do have a PDF Viewer as well. Um, you've got whatever that is. Hmm, never heard of that. Um, you know, we get your time stuff, all your normal stuff. You got a file encryptor, which is quite good to have. Um, you got firewall setup, so should you want a firewall, there it is. Um, you got some stuff in the internet, your flash player, your, um, you can get flash player, which is pretty good. Your hex chat, obviously. A website downloader, which is pretty cool. Whatever that is. Uh, file downloader, if you still use a file downloader, as I understand it, some people still do. I don't personally, and I don't know anyone that does, but if you do use a file downloader, well, there it is. And I just come to think if I can imagine that being quite good on older PCs. Got your uh, transmission for BitTorrent and an ad blocker pre installed. So if you just want to do that, you could block some ads. Although I would suggest you don't, because people need to make their money somehow. Although I suppose if your PC really is that old, it could be a good option for you. Uh, you got a media converter, which is quite good to have. Podcast manager, all your usual stuff. You got P burner, ISO master, and under fun, you've got some simple games. Which um, games are so much down to personal preference. I'm not sure why you'd include that, but okay. Um. It's a bit of a confusing thing for you. There's no right click on the desktop to change wallpaper. Confusing, I know. But, um. I, as I understand it, it's under desktop and wallpaper. And you know, you've got box standard wallpapers in here, everything you could want and or need. I must say, there's not a lot in the variety, but okay. I would rather have some, you know, shots of, um, you know, landscapes and that, but. These wallpapers are nice enough. Um, they've got a few themes pre-installed as well. You know, you've got all this lot. Which, by the way, that looks very nice. I must say it's not quite as nice as the original pup, because the original pup is a bit more, well, um, sort of standard if you want. You know, you got this. Which is quite good. I assume that's more for touch screens than that, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, you've got your uh, this. Not very good description now. Which looks pretty good. And what on earth is that? Oh, it just closed it out. I don't know why I didn't see that, but. Uh, me personally, I'd probably just go with the default puffy one. It's nice enough. It'll run on all PCs. So. In conclusion, 
fluffy Linux is not only lightweight, but it is absolutely packed full of software. It's an incredibly useful little Linux distribution. And anyone with an old PC, I would recommend you give this a look. It's absolutely great how much they managed to cram into such a small size with some such low system requirements. Um, it'd also be good for live CDs for just taking around with you. Um, the only issue I like to say is I had that uh, problems installing it, but I assume that's not going to affect everyone. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you for watching.